as you can see, there have been many far-reaching and very consequential policies and decisions that have been agreed upon today. Keeping all that in mind, I would, at this stage, request Finance Minister to highlight the key issues from the finance track. Thank you, Jason. As, uh, as was said by the External Affairs Minister, under the guidance of Honorable Prime Minister, India's G20 Presidency has worked for the theme One Earth, One Family, One Future. So today we are in a position to adopt, through the finance track, people-centric, action-oriented and far-sighted approach, and as a result of which, several outcomes of the finance track will certainly reflect uh, these objectives with which we started the negotiations. It has been very clear in our mind that we should ensure that no one is left behind in our pursuit of global solutions. So we have endeavored to support countries, especially those from the global south, to be an integral part of the global decision-making process. The G20, as you all know, is a very diverse group. Each country is at different milestones of economic development, and their trajectory is also very different in achieving their developmental goals. So through well-curated debates and careful assimilation of all the perspectives, the Indian Presidency has crafted solutions that resonate with each member, offering a shared path forward for all. Many action-oriented outcomes of this presidency contain comprehensive strategies that cater to the unique needs and aspirations of all developing nations. We assume the presidency at a challenging time of geopolitical tension. The Indian presidency has worked to ensure that these divergences don't overshadow the core developmental outcomes or concerns of the global community that demand collaborative solutions. So today, as I look back at the 10 months of Indian presidency, I'm left with gratitude and satisfaction. I can confidently state that the Indian G20 presidency has walked the talk. Now, let me share with you just some of the key achievements of the Indian Presidency, the finance track. Um, first one is the outcomes which are focused on strengthening the MDBs to address shared global challenges. Outcomes which are focused on strengthening the MDBs to address shared global challenges of the 21st century. So under this strengthening MDBs, there are four key highlights that I'd like to bring to your notice. The first one is agreement on the need for a better, bigger, and more effective MDBs. It is so necessary to have better, bigger, and more effective MDBs because the developmental demands from all across the globe is so high, these institutions will have to be better and bigger. This is also going to contribute to enhancing representation and voice of developing countries in the decision making. The second under the MDB, strengthening of MDBs, is the G20 Independent Expert Group on strengthening MDBs, and this was established and it has submitted its volume one. The first report, their report consists of two volumes. The first volume has already been sub, uh, submitted. The report recommends a triple agenda that dovetails with a call for the bigger, better, and more effective MDBs. The third point in strengthening MDBs is the agreement to collectively work towards boosting World Bank's financing capacity. Here the options will be explored that will deliver a powerful boost to the IBRD headroom to support low-income and middle-income countries. And the fourth, endorsement for the G20 roadmap for implementation of the recommendations 
of an independent panel on capital adequacy framework of uh, the MDBs. So the CAF recommendations are focused on enabling MDBs to use the existing resources effectively. The roadmap estimates, this is going to be of interest for the media, the roadmap estimates that implementation of the CAF and the measures thereby will potentially yield additional lending headroom of approximately 200 billion US dollars over the next decade. So through these achievements, India has harnessed the opportunity provided by the G20 presidency to effectively articulate and embed the priorities of the global south in the larger global conversation on the MDB reforms. I move to the second, laying the building blocks for a globally coordinated and comprehensive policy and regulatory framework for crypto assets. The global push for clearer policies on crypto assets has gained momentum under the Indian presidency and a global consensus is emerging on the same. The presidency will support the IMF and the FSB in, and FSB is also setting the contours of the regulatory framework for a globally coordinated approach to crypto assets. So the presidency with the support of IMF and the FSB is setting these contours. The IMF and FSB synthesis paper about which I've spoken to the media earlier, including a roadmap. On that, I just want to give my observation. This synthesis paper delves into how the policy and regulatory frameworks developed by the IMF and the FSB alongside the other standard setting bodies will fit together and interact with each other. This paper is now available in the public domain for all of you all to see. The third one which I'd like to draw your attention to is the financial inclusion and productivity gains through digital public infrastructure. India, as you all are aware, through the India stack, became the first country to develop all three foundational DPIs, the digital identity, the real-time fast payment, and a platform to safely share personal data without compromising privacy. So embedded this concept in the G20 financial inclusion agenda by formulating G20 policy recommendations for advancing financial inclusion and productivity gains through digital public infrastructure. This recommendation, this set of recommendations cover five aspects. Use of DPIs and accelerating financial inclusion, fostering well-designed DPIs, regulatory and supervisory aspects of DPI, institutional and governance arrangements by DPI, and ensuring customer protection. So DPI has also been integrated into the G20 Financial Inclusion Action Plan the FIAP, which will run between 2024 and 2026. That's a strong legacy of the Indian presidency. We also uh, assume the co-chair of the Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion, the implementation of the Financial Inclusion Action Plan, as well as the policy recommendations on DPI will remain as areas that will continue to be heard across the G20 Forum. So uh, the fourth one which I'd like to highlight is the debt resolution under the common framework and also beyond the common framework. Since its establishment in 2021, only Chad as a country uh, has had its debt restructured. The others have been waiting. So since India took over the G20 presidency, Good progress has been made in the ongoing country cases under the common framework of debt treatment and the three countries in that are Zambia, Ghana and Ethiopia. Succeed, we've also succeeded in using the G20 platform to also 
put in place a coordinated mechanism to address the debt situation of Sri Lanka, which is outside of the common framework. So G20 will continue discussing the policy-related issues linked to the implementation of the common framework and make periodically such appropriate recommendations. The launch of the Global Sovereign Debt Roundtable, which is co-chaired by IMF, the World Bank, and also the G20 Presidency to enhance the conversation among the various stakeholders and address current shortcomings in the debt restructuring process. That has now become an institution which is actually act acting as a catalytic agent in getting resolutions done faster. The fifth point under the finance track which I'd like to bring, your note, bring to your notice is the financing of cities of tomorrow. Key concerns of the low-income countries and emerging markets has always been to mobilize resources for financing sustainable, resilient and also inclusive cities of tomorrow. The G20 principles which are issued for financing cities of tomorrow to promote effective and efficient use of financial resources to support urban development that is socially inclusive, environmentally responsible and economically sustainable are now all under the framework of the principles which have been used. The MDBs and the development financial institutions can use these principles in their financing plans for urban infrastructure. The sixth, which I'd like to quickly draw your attention, is the two-pillar solution on global taxation, the international taxation. We've made substantial progress in the two-pillar solution, and uh, we've, uh, the work has also happened on the exchange of information on immovable property transactions between countries. There is a launch of the pilot program of the South Asia Academy in India for tax and financial crime investigation in collaboration with the OECD. The seventh on which I'll elaborate is mechanism to support the timely and adequate mobilization of resources for climate finance. Till date, the conversation was focused uh, on calling on developed countries to say where is that hundred dollar, hundred billion US dollars which didn't come. But Indian Presidency adopted an action-oriented approach and the G20 explored mechanisms that can support timely and adequate mobilization of resources for climate finance. Facilitating access to multilateral cl climate funds and enhancing their leverage and ability to mobilize private capital has also been our focus, special focus again on development, demonstration, deployment of green and low carbon technologies. Now the list of outcomes, I've pointed out seven, just three more which I'll not detail, go into the detail, but you can take it as enough has been done on that, I'll also put it out for your consideration. Scaling up sustainable finance for social sectors, health and education. Technical assistance for capacity building. Then global conversation on transition policies, especially to include range of options, both on pricing and non-pricing. And the third one, enhancing finance health collaboration so as to uh, cover many other work streams as well. So I listed out seven, elaborated on them, three others which have not elaborated, but on all of them, substantial program, uh, progress and outcomes have been achieved. Uh, India's uh, received tremendous support from the G20 members across the table. Uh, the outcomes of the Indian presidency are a testimony to India's commitment to multilateralism and for international cooperation. We are sure the upcoming Brazilian presidency of our strong support and to continue the momentum on key issues of global importance. I now hand over back to Minister Jay Shankar.